Hello, how are you today? Are you ready for your lesson? Hopefully I'll see you in church. Maybe you'll hear the lesson twice, I don't know. We'll see. Let's re review what we did last week. Remember my stick? Remember my stick with the whistle on it? It's kind of like Moses' stick, isn't it? A little bit. I don't think Moses had a whistle, though. Maybe he did. Do you remember what we've been talking about? Who's this? Pharaoh. Good job. We've been learning about Pharaoh and baby Moses. His mom put him in the basket boat because mean King Pharaoh was afraid of the Israelite children and he said to her, all of the boy babies, what a so mean Pharaoh. But baby Moses was found by Pharaoh's daughter, the princess. And she took him in and she raised him to be her own. And he got to go and grow up in the palace and go to school. And he got a job at the palace, being in charge of all of the slave drivers. But then he saw how the Israelite people were getting treated so badly, remember? And he hurt the slave driver, and he ran away. Not supposed to run away. And he started working for Jethro, right there. And he took care of Jethro's camels. See his camels that he took care of? You're right, those aren't camels, those are sheep. Good job. But one day when he was taking care of the sheep, he saw something very strange, a burning bush. It was on fire, but it wasn't getting burned up. And all of a sudden he heard, Moses, take off your shoes, you're on holy ground. And God gave Moses a different job, didn't he? Moses wasn't going to take care of these sheep anymore. Nope, he was going to take care of God's chosen people. So Moses took off his shoes and he got his job, his job description and God told him what his new job was going to be. And he had to go and talk to... Pharaoh, right? And what did he tell Pharaoh? God said, let my people go so that they might come and worship me. Right? He wanted them to have a break because all they did was work, work, work for King Pharaoh. But then, what did King Pharaoh say? No. Who's your God? I don't know your God. Why am I going to listen to him? And then Moses took his staff and he put it on the ground and it turned into a snake. Remember? And then Pharaoh got his magicians and his magicians did the same thing. But... Moses' snake ate up all the magician's snake. And then Moses picked his stake up again, and it turned back into a stick or a staff. But you know what happened after Moses talked to Pharaoh? Pharaoh got kind of angry. And he told all the people, you know what? You guys have too much time to talk to this Moses guy. So from now on, you're going to work harder and harder and harder. And you're going to do more work. 
And you know what? That made the people very unhappy with Moses. They said, man, Moses, you were supposed to come help us. You were supposed to come help us and tell Pharaoh to let us go. But now he's just making us work harder, Moses. That was not the plan. And Moses said, you're right. But I told you Pharaoh was not going to listen at first. But God is still in control. God has a plan. And Moses went and he prayed and he waited and he listened for God. And then God told him, right here, God spake unto Moses and he said, Take your rod, that's this, and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of the Egypt. Wait. Hold on, I didn't start at the right spot. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Look, he's going out into the water, and thou shalt stand by the river's edge, and when he comes up, you're going to take the rod that turned into a serpent. You're going to take it in your hand. And then you're going to say under him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath sent me unto thee. So that's what Moses is going to tell Pharaoh. The Lord God of the Hebrews sent me to you. And he said... Let my people go that they may serve me into the wilderness. And they would, and behold, you did not hear. Now the Lord says, so that you will know that I am the Lord, I will take this rod that's in my hand and I will, it says, I will smite with the rod that is in my hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned into blood. Ick. Turned into blood? Oh, that's disgusting. And the Lord spake unto Moses, say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and stretch out thy hand upon the waters of Egypt. I have some water. He said, take thy rod and stretch out thy hand upon the waters of Egypt. And he waved the rod over the waters of Egypt. He waved it over the water. And the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants and all the waters that were in the river what do you think happened to you? Hmm? What do you think happened to those waters when Moses waved his rod over the waters? What did he say was gonna happen? Right. That's right, you were paying attention. I'm very glad it turned to be blood. Oh yuck! It turned to blood. Uh-oh. Sorry. The water turned to blood. And it stank. It was very stinky. And all of the fish that were in the water, what do you think happened to them? Do fish swim in blood? No. Fish do not swim in blood. What do fish swim in? Water. They need water. But they didn't have water anymore. They only had blood. So all of the fish died. Oh, it smelled so bad. Has anybody ever had a fish tank that needed to be cleaned because it was stinky and the fish died? Yeah, that's how this smelled times one million. So, let's see what Pharaoh says about that. What did Pharaoh do? I bet you he was really mad. 
And the magicians of Egypt did the same thing with their enchantments. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. He did not listen anymore. His heart was hardened and he did not listen to what the Lord had to say. That's never good when we harden our hearts. And Pharaoh turned and he went into his house. And all the Egyptians digged around the river for water to drink. For they could not drink the water of the river. And seven days were fulfilled. Would you want to drink that? And seven days were fulfilled. After that, the Lord had smitten the river. That's the end of our story. We'll find out what happens next week. We're going to see if Pharaoh changes his mind and decides to listen to God. Till then, I love you. Bye-bye.